uh, I want to thank you also, Marco, Giovanna, all the people that are um, that organize this type of uh, of meetings. Uh, this not want to be a lesson, uh, but uh, it will be uh, an introduce uh, an, inter an introduction to unsupervised learning, both for uh, mid level. Uh, and uh, basic level. So uh, in the in the first uh, slide, you will see uh, the the basic level of the unsupervised learning topic, and then uh, the the topic will be more uh, more concentrated to the uh, the depth part. So uh, we will uh, also uh, handle with data, real data. Uh, we will uh, play with some uh, tools. Uh, uh, on R and on uh, Python. And uh, yes, uh, this is a nine level description of uh, unsupervised learning techniques and then how to adapt these to uh, multivariate time series. So uh, we will not deep on the, the theoretical aspects uh, to not burden the, the lesson. Uh, math tool will be presented, but uh, if you think that uh, the two, only the application are uh, interesting, uh, you can use it uh, without, uh, uh, without investigating too much uh, uh, on them. So I will, uh, I will take these two uh, levels uh, in the explanation. Uh, so uh, as I will say, uh, there is not only math, but also uh, a lot of fun. So uh, let's begin. Uh, who I am? Uh, who I am? I am Andrea Megaro. Uh, I have a bachelor uh, degree in uh, mathematics for finance and insurance, and uh, I have a master in uh, mathematical engineer. Um, the I took the specialization in uh, networks that are. Uh, uh, analysis and finance. Uh, the latter also thanks to the courses that uh, I um, follow at uh, FFL in my Erasmus uh, semester. Uh, I, I am part of the ASP project, uh, Alta Scuola Politecnico, uh, an Italian program um for the 150 best students of uh, Politecnico uh, of Milan and Turin and uh, in this program uh, I acquired the, the, the double degree uh, in uh, mathematical so uh, during this path I met uh, I met uh, uh, my my colleagues um, Lapo Daniele etc and uh, with them, I established the gymnasium. Gymnasio, uh, as you, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can read the, the name, the full name uh, on my T-shirt, uh, aims the, to bring, uh, um, is a startup, is a startup, first of all, and aims to, to bring uh, uh, well-being uh, to, to the everyone life. Uh, the first product that uh, we will uh, focus on, uh, will focus on the home fitness, so, uh, we are now talking about uh, um, how uh, to, to monitor uh, and guide uh, people uh, through the personal, uh, personalized workouts that uh, they uh, do uh, at home. So this is the, the main topic of uh, our startup, our project. Um, in this uh, startup, uh, I'm also... Uh, uh, developer um, of uh, mathematical, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, algorithms, uh, and tools. So this is uh, my technical, uh, my technical side. Uh, while on the on the other side, uh, I I'm also the CFO of of, uh, of the startup. So also business administration, uh, etc., are um, stuff that uh, concern with my role. Uh, in my free, in uh, my free time, I study math. So it is not a very very enthusiastic free time, but yes, uh, I I study math. I study machine learning, artificial intelligence. Uh, more, uh, um, uh, let's say that uh, these are uh, topics that uh, that can be considered as a passion uh, more than uh, than a work. So. 
uh, this is the reason why I decided to uh, to share my knowledge here uh, with uh, with this uh, series of conferences. Uh, but uh, I'm also in a in a company that is about fitness, and so I have also to do it uh, sometimes. <laughs> So uh, after this long and boring presentation, maybe I will uh, start with the checklist of uh, today. Today's presentation will not cover all these slides, also because uh, it will last uh, uh, too much time. So um, I want to, to make you uh, a good impression, not to bother you. So. Uh, let's begin with the introduction, but uh, maybe I will stop to the second uh, slash uh, third uh, chapter. So um, let's keep uh, um, let's going on. Uh, first uh, chapter is uh, uh, about uh, uh, the theoretical knowledge about unsupervised learning. So what uh, uh, unsupervised means? Uh, it will be a theoretical uh, chapter, uh, but uh, I, I want to do uh, to give you an impression. So and to and to leave uh, um, a mark uh, that can be uh, that can stimulate you. And so I want also to um, I added also some uh, graphical interpretations, uh, uh, some um, draw uh, and. Uh, the, the main focus is uh, about the difference uh, uh, differences uh, uh, with supervised learning, uh, with uh, uh, obviously uh, some examples to, to be more clear. Uh, the second chapter focus uh, on uh, the shift to the time series analysis. So uh, if the first one is more theoretical, more uh, generic, the second one, uh, uh, shift to the, the time multivariate uh, time series analysis. And uh, uh, in particular, um, there, is, uh, th there are two approaches uh, in which we can uh, tackle this uh, problem, but uh, the, there will be also the explanation why I choose uh, the, the first approach uh, and, uh, and not the second, but uh, we will deep uh, on this, uh, this aspect. The third, the third chapter is um, about uh, um, how to know uh, if the model is uh, better than another. If the, the model that we choose, the TV chose, is better than uh, the other, the others that uh, we can uh, take. Uh, why? So uh, why is the the first uh, the first important point? Uh, which technique uh, in which case are more appropriate uh, and so on. Uh, the, the fourth chapter is about uh, um, um, how to act practically. Um, yes, it is not uh, a, um, a topic strictly correlated with unsupervised learning, with uh, um, with uh, time series uh, analysis, uh, but uh, um, sorry, Ju Julien, I don't know if you are listening to me. Uh, yes. Someone uh, said me that uh, it is uh, not possible to enter the uh, the meeting, so maybe you can uh, add some. Uh, okay. Uh, I, uh, I can. Uh, in, uh, I copy the link and you can. Uh... Maybe if you. Okay. Uh, you have the link on the chat, and you can okay. send uh, this link on, uh, to your uh, to your friends. Okay, okay. So maybe I will do it uh, in a, in a moment. Because uh, I don't I don't see them on. Uh... Okay, okay. I I shared it. Second only. And. Okay. And. Yes, sorry for this uh, little interruption. Uh, yes, we were talking about the fourth uh, chapter. So uh, it was not, uh, it is not uh, um, strictly correlated, but uh, um, 
I decided to insert uh, uh, the to insert this chapter uh, for you, for you that are listening and uh, want to know how to practically hack when a uh, multivariate time series uh, arrive. So uh, not to use the the algorithm as uh, I I can explain in the theoretical part, but what uh, I have to do uh, in the in the first phases. So when I when I have this data and uh, I don't know how to, to manage it uh, before the the unsupervised learning techniques uh, um, and uh, and so yes it is uh, very very interesting to uh, to give you some tools uh, in, uh, in 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 this sense the five the the fifth uh, chapter is about the case study so we will uh, handle. Uh, this uh, uh, a public uh, data set. Uh, I will share uh, with you also the link in, um, at which you can uh, find this uh, this bunch of data data. Uh, and uh, I will explain you both the part in Python uh, and uh, the one six uh, chapter about uh, uh, the, the take home lessons so uh, the maybe the the most important uh, uh, chapter that uh, that you can uh, analyze when you when you use your uh, your algorithms so uh, let's begin with uh, the first chapter okay uh, so unveil the the main actor of the the world presentation unsupervised learning. So I will present the theoretical background on uh, uh, unsupervised techniques, uh, uh, both uh, from the um, theoretical and uh, uh, graphical point of view. Let's begin. Uh, I start uh, usually. I start with. Uh, uh, a quote that explains how the problem is uh, relevant in our society in uh, nowadays uh, uh, problems. And so this time I decided to, use, to quote uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, he thinks that uh, this is the way we can learn the most about the future. Uh, we have model in our mind, but uh, we cannot refine it uh, without comparing it uh, with the one that the data discovered. So uh, there is uh, our world, uh, there is uh, the world described by data. Maybe there is uh, some noise uh, in, the, in the background, okay. Um, yes, and the, the, the true is near to this uh, two points. Uh, world and world of, uh, of the data. And uh, this is the point. So uh, we want to learn, but we want to learn with, uh, 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 maybe there is some noise in the program. Uh, Julian, can you mute all the participants? Yes, I'm doing it. Thank you, Julian. And uh, yes. Uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence are two uh, ways to learn something from data. The starting point, uh, uh, what is data? So I will start uh, uh, from the basis. Uh, it is a simple concept. Uh, I want to uh, summarize it uh, in the two main uh, parts of, uh, of a data set, items and features. Items are the row of uh, a certain uh, uh, data, um, data set and the columns are the features. So um, how to describe the items that I have in the row. Uh, important to have many, many rows. So many, many will be discussed in the next uh, slides, but uh, the columns uh, uh, can be also not too much. Indeed, uh, we can extract more and more uh, rows, uh, pro, um, columns uh, from uh, also one single column. Uh, 
Uh, for example, uh, la last year I uh, had a project uh, in which I had to analyze the, uh, a series of uh, tweets. Uh, I had uh, tons of rows, uh, but only one column. And then from the single column, I extract all uh, the features involved in the analysis. So uh, many, many rows are important. Uh, one row, uh, one column is enough to do. Uh, the analysis if this column is uh, very, very relevant. Yes, let's um, so begin uh, with the, the concept of uh, learning. Uh, before to continue, uh, I wanted to make uh, a clarification. If you want to, uh, to do some questions, uh, raise your hand. I will, uh, I will give you the... Um, uh, the, um, the possibility to, to talk with me. Uh, I prefer to do this uh, series of uh, questions maybe at the, the end of uh, each chapter, but uh, if you have to, to, to question something uh, really, really correlated with what I'm saying, uh, feel free to, uh, to contact me. So uh, let's continue with, the, uh, with the, this theoretical uh, uh, this first approach. Uh, learning is divided, as you can see in the, in the scheme, uh, with supervised and unsupervised. But uh, what is the theoretical main difference between these two approaches? Uh, let's begin by supervised learning. That is the topic uh, mainly treated in this series of, uh, of meetings uh, in uh, machine learning together. Uh, you will know uh, you uh, already know that uh, Xn uh, are the predictors, uh, Y is the observed variable or quantitative response. So we have uh, a data set composed by these N features, these N columns, and uh, the last one is Y, and so the, the quantitative response or the, uh, the observed variable. Then there is uh, uh, the f function. This function, uh, as we can see in uh, the, the formula uh, reported uh, under supervised uh, square, uh, is uh, the, the representation of uh, uh, the, the reality. Let's say that uh, y is the uh, response variable that I want to analyze in the real life, and I have uh, a real uh, in chat, okay, sorry, okay. Um, and uh, this f is the function that connects some, in some sense, uh, y to x1, xn. Uh, in the real life, uh, uh, I cannot know f. And uh, I can guess uh, f, so, I can uh, imagine that f can be uh, my half hat uh, among a set of possible ones. So uh, not in the possible, uh, uh, not in uh, among all the f that I can choose. And so it became it, uh, it became uh, our uh, model. Our half hat is our model. Uh, as you can see uh, by the formula, we we want to uh minimize uh, something and uh, the thing that we want to minimize is uh, the expectation between y and so the observe the, the reality uh, the observed uh, variable uh, the quantitative uh, response and y hat so what i predict with my algorithm squared squared uh, to um, is a, is a choice to uh, to balance uh, all these results. I will not dip on uh, this uh, technical uh, side, but uh, let's keep the, the square. So uh, in, the, in the formula, y is, um, is rewrite as f of x plus uh, epsilon. But what is epsilon? Epsilon is the error, uh, is the... the um, uh, is the, the thing that cannot be uh, 
analyzed uh, predict by our model because uh, it is uh, intrinsic in the reality. So we can model y with fx plus something that cannot be uh, controlled by the, the real model. The f represents the, the real uh, model that we describe in uh, an hypothetical scenario, the, the response variable y. And there is uh, uh, f hat, that is uh, our model, our interpretation of the world. Not the truth, but uh, our uh, sim simplification of the truth. And uh, x, uh, that obviously are the, um, the, the, the data and, uh, as I said before, all the... Um... Sorry, Andrea, one question. Expectation, you mean mean for random variable? Yes. Okay. I, don't, I don't see you. Okay. I don't see you, who, who you are? It's Annie. It's Annie. Okay, Yanni. Yes, it is only this, the, the question is, uh, uh, yes. Uh, this is the expectation for the random variable Y and then uh, FAT is the um, evaluation uh, with this uh, with this model that I built on. Uh, uh, yes, expectation. You mean uh, the mean for the random variable, so the yes. mean of this difference. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Andrea, I think you have a, a little problem with uh, the expectation because you don't have it uh, on the second row. I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I, at the yes. end, you have uh, yes, okay. yes, uh, uh, yes. There is a typo. Yes, I will. Uh, I will uh, make uh, the other the, the slide, the new slide, and uh, you will uh, have the, the correct uh, version of the slide. Yes, sorry. Yes, no problem. And uh, yes, we want to minimize the the difference between F and so the uh, ideal model and F hat. So. Uh, the, the model that I built, but the, the, the thing that I cannot uh, uh, minimize is uh, the variance of uh, epsilon. So this is uh, uh, something that I have in the model in, the, in all the situation and uh, uh, on which I can't uh, work. So we have to uh, assume that uh, we will have some errors uh, in, uh, in every case of the supervised learning. But uh, um, with the unsupervised learning, uh, this is not possible. Why? The first reason is because I have not uh, why. So uh, I, I have observation, but uh, no response. And the second uh, uh, reason is because uh, I have different uh, intention and different uh, goal to, to do this uh, analysis. So let's uh, go. Uh, through example to, to clarify this, uh, uh, this concept of uh, unsupervised learning. Uh, we have some uh, data, we have some observation in, some, uh, in a space. Uh, there are two approaches uh, to analyze the, that data in, uh, in the unsupervised way. The first one can be summarized with the most uh, famous uh, uh, and known um, uh, approach that is the PCA. Uh, it looks to find a low dimension representation of the observation uh, that explain a good fraction of the variance. So uh, with this sentence, I want to say that we have in, in, a, spa in a bigger space some data and I want to represent them with the with uh, very uh, few errors uh, the, um, in a lower dimension, this data. This is uh, the, the, um, the first approach with the unsupervised learning. The second approach is the clustering one. And uh, this is the one that uh, we will uh, uh, explore during this presentation. Uh, it looks to find an homogeneous subgroup among uh, the observations uh, that we can have in the space. So uh, this is a blind approach. Uh, we want to 
put a label to the data without knowing anything. So this is uh, the, the task. This is uh, uh, the, um, our approach. And so uh, we want to group items similar in some ways. This is a sentence uh, taken from uh, an introduction to statistical learning. Uh, this is uh, the book that uh, that I that uh, I use uh, very very often in my in my readings. Uh, um, this is uh, maybe uh, one of one of the bibles of the data scientists, and so I want to to report a a, a sentence from from this uh, from this book. Also, uh, Julien knows it uh, very very well, and uh, we can. Uh, we can use it also to to dip on some aspects uh, if you want to uh, to understand better some uh, mathematical uh, topics that I will present uh, today. Uh, one curiosity that uh, I will not uh, deepen on because it is not the the main point of the um, of this uh, this presentation. If we have uh, an observation. M with a response, and so a response variable Y, and N minus M with no response. Uh, this is the case of semi-supervised learning. Uh, but uh, as I said, this is another topic, uh, and so another presentation, uh, if uh, Julien will invite me. And uh, yes, but uh, we want to deep on this clustering analysis. What uh, what we can do uh, this is uh, the um, this, these are the the four main uh, clustering uh, uh, types uh, of uh, of analysis the first one is uh, the hierarchical clustering there, there are the numbers near to the picture so you can have also a graphical representation of what i'm uh, saying and uh, yes, the, the first one is the, the hierarchical clustering. And uh, I want to do deep on uh, every single uh, uh, type of cluster. Uh, we will focus on the second one, but I want to give some uh, spot of knowledge about uh, uh, every type, because I think this, uh, in, an introduc in, an, in an introduction to the, this world, it can be uh, very interesting to know about every techniques. So uh, it pro uh, the first one uh, produces uh, a hierarchical representation of the data, um, as you can see also the, by the, the graph. Uh, at the lowest level, there are the single data points, uh, while going up in uh, the hierarchy, the cluster uh, join uh, the closest group uh, recursively. So uh, there are two approaches to, uh, to build this type of knowledge. There is the agglomerative one, uh, so-called bottom-up, and the, the divisive one, so the top-down. Uh, the, the first merges uh, uh, groups starting from the single points, so the, uh, the last level, uh, using the minor intergroup dissimilarity. So uh, it is analyzed the distance between points. The ones that are nearest are grouped into, um, into a branch, and then uh, the, the groups uh, growth until the last uh, until the last point, the, the highest level. The second starts from a single big enormous cluster, single cluster, and then splits into all its component, all the, uh, the leaf, the, the, the little groups. Uh, the most common graphical representation of this uh, clustering is the dendrogram, as you can see, uh, in fact, uh, indeed from, uh, from the picture. And, uh, uh, the most uh, evident disadvantage of this method uh, are two, uh, mainly are two, uh, the time and the memory complexity, because uh, it is, uh, uh, because uh, the, we have to evaluate all the dissimilarity metrics 
and so all the points uh, have to have to be compared between each other and if we have n data the order is uh, n square so we have a lot of uh, uh, compl memory complexity and time complexity and the algorithms uh, imposes uh, a hierarchical uh, structure even uh, if uh, data are not are not uh, current with it so uh, even if uh, they are not uh, hierarchical built uh, the second uh, type of uh, clustering uh, is the partitional clustering uh, it is a way to separate into groups based on uh, an optimization problem uh, that will be discussed in the next slide, so I will not deepen on, uh, on it. Uh, it is very important to, to highlight that every point is in one cluster or group. This is important because we have now the third group, the third uh, type of clustering, and it is the fuzzy clustering. The fuzzy clustering method, on the contrary, associates each point to a cluster with a certain degree. And uh, this degree of uh, belongingness uh, is assigned to each point uh, for each cluster. Uh, and it is uh, uh, written in a matrix, in a big matrix uh, n times k, if uh, we have uh, n points and uh, k cluster. So all the rows uh, must sum to up to, to one, and uh, they, um, all the numbers inside this matrix uh, represents the, the percentage or the uh, probability uh, to belong to uh, a single cluster. And uh, this is uh, very, very cool to, to analyze the one point uh, uh, without uh, stick on one single cluster, but uh, it presents uh, obviously uh, relevant uh, disadvantages like uh, uh, there is no uh, a clear positioning and uh, it is uh, also very time consuming but uh, the the first reason is very very uh, crucial because uh, if you have to apply it in a um, in a company environment uh, you cannot uh, say uh, yes this point belong to this cluster with a certain per uh, with a certain probability you have to give some results, uh, you have to stick on your uh, problem and give uh, your solution. So it is not very common in the real life application. And then uh, we, we came up with the density-based approach. Uh, the density-based uh, try to find a cluster according to the concentration of points that uh, the algorithm uh, find uh, in the space. Uh, let's uh, introduce one example that is the one reported in the in the picture that is the db scan uh, i want to 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 explain this uh, this type this uh, this type of clustering because it is the most uh, um, it is the, the the easiest one so uh, i want only to to clarify the the concept of density based uh, in this uh, uh, in this algorithm, it, uh, two parameters are required, and uh, and they are the epsilon and uh, the minimum numbers of points uh, required to form a dense region. Uh, the algorithm uh, starts with an Albert, um, a starting point, a start one starting point, and uh, try to find uh, all the um, all the other points that are near uh, enough to satisfy the um, the epsilon uh, the epsilon uh, ball. So uh, every point must be in the epsilon ball uh, by starting from the the, the first uh, the first point. In this way, uh, all the points uh, agglomerates. Uh, only if uh, they are near um, near to the first point that is the uh, as said the, the the starting point then they uh, if the um, if the the cluster uh, is formed so if 
many uh, other points inside this epsilon ball, uh, the algorithm shift the, the starting point and try to form another cluster and so on. So the, um, the objective uh, is to, to find as many cluster as possible without considering uh, the outliers. So the outliers uh, are all these points uh, that have no uh, point in the epsilon ball that they have uh, um, for, uh, in the, um, the in the environment. Okay, after this uh, uh, brief clarification about all the types, uh, we will focus on the second one, as said, so the partitional uh, clustering al algorithms. And so I want you also to, to give you um, a practical example uh, about uh, how it works. So um, I dip this one uh, because it is also uh, the, the most uh, involved in the practical, uh, how to say, when, when you have to, to produce uh, some, um, some results, uh, it is the, the most uh, common uh, used. So I want also to, uh, to give you the impression about the, the one that uh, uh, is, uh, is very common. And uh, I want also to, uh, to make you clear the, the so-called K-means algorithm that uh, maybe you heard uh, in, some, uh, in some lessons of uh, the statistical uh, learning uh, uh, courses and so on. So uh, let's begin by the, um, uh, this, uh, this approach. Uh, the, the steps are the following. Uh, the, algorithm, the, the algorithm randomly defines the starting case centroid according to uh, the, the K that is fixed. And so the number of cluster that we, uh, we want to find a priori. So uh, we have a target point. We want to cluster in uh, K um k groups and uh, uh, the algorithm uh, try to find this k group then uh, the distance between the de the data and the centroids is calculated and each element is assigned to uh, on the basis to the the cluster with the nearest centroid then uh, the centroids are uh, changed to minimize the, the, the overall uh, cost function. And this procedure is repeated and repeated until uh, the function f is uh, optimized. And with function f, uh, um, we, uh, we mean the function that evaluates this distance between uh, centroid and points. Uh, the, this function is uh, the, the mathematical translation of, uh, the, of the given splitted condition. So uh, it is not correct that it is the uh, distance between uh, the, 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 the cluster representation, uh, the, the cluster represent and all the points of this cluster, but uh, it is uh, uh, the, the mathematical translation of what we want to minimize to obtain this series of, of clusters. So in other words, uh, given K uh, cluster, uh, C1, CK, and N elements, we want to find a certain function F that goes from all the possible partition uh, of the data set uh, in K uh, group to a single partition, a single specific partition. And we want to minimize uh, this uh, certain uh, function F uh, to end up uh, with K non-empty clusters. So this is uh, the objective of the, uh, of the partitional cluster algorithms. I want also to uh, pro, to, to bring you the, the most common example, so the, the k-mean. Uh, as said in, uh, in the slide, the goal of the algorithm is, is to minimize the, the L2 distance. So 
uh, this is only the, um, the, the representation. Uh, uh, the, this function f is the representation of uh, uh, what I decide to minimize to obtain this series of clustering. And so uh, the, the LG distance, as said, and uh, the, the formula is uh, reported in the slide. So it is the summation of all the points minus the, uh, the, the mean of all the points uh, inside one single cluster. Yes, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the point, the, the crucial point. We want to, uh, to make a comparison between uh, these standard approaches, uh, approaches and uh, the time series uh, uh, approaches in the next chapter. And so I want also to make a comparison between uh, the, um, the so-called classical approach, with, so uh, the one in which uh, uh, the full algorithm is present and this type of, uh, um, of explanation of the uh, clustering uh, uh, process. Uh, we will uh, uh, talk about uh, three main actors in, uh, the, in, the next, uh, uh, in the next slides. The first one, uh, crucial point, uh, is uh, the distance. So as said in the, uh, in the slide before, in this case, uh, the distance was uh, uh, the LC distance, uh, the Euclidean one, the Manhattan, the Pearson correlation, all, the, all, these, um, all these distance can be considered to, uh, to evaluate uh, uh, the distance in a certain space, uh, the cluster prototype, and so how to identify your, my cluster uh, within the possible. Uh, I see uh, George, maybe that have uh, a raise hand. No. no, sorry, that was a mistake, sorry. Okay. And uh, so we have also the, the cluster prototype. And so the, uh, the, represent, uh, the representant of a given cluster that I, uh, that I evaluate through my, uh, my clustering alg algorithm, and then the, the similarities measures that are the, the one that we will um, um, that uh, will be uh, explored in the next session to uh, make a comparison with uh, the distances, uh, the classical distances uh, that uh, are um, that are uh, the, the, the main actors of the um, of the classical clustering algorithm. In fact, uh, in, um, in the next session with time series uh, uh, clustering, uh, distances uh, are not so uh, common. Uh, we want to, uh, to talk about uh, um, distance between uh, uh, two entities that are not in, uh, in a, let's say, easy space. And so we have also to uh, talk about uh, dissimilarity that have uh, that has um, uh, not uh, the all the characteristics the characteristics that uh, are uh, properly of the distances uh, let's make uh, 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 um, how to say uh, the the a sum up of the properties of the uh, of the distances uh, the positivity, the symmetry, and the triangular inequality. Very often, the last one in the dissimilarity uh, is not satisfied, and so uh, these uh, types, uh, uh, this type of uh, of measure, uh, let's say improperly measure, is the uh, is the way to evaluate in a uh, less uh, um, less strong way. Uh, distances between objects uh, in a certain space. But uh, what is the, uh, the main problem in clustering? The main problem is the validation. In fact, uh, um, until now, we saw that uh, these processes are very smooth, uh, but uh, when I want to validate my result, what I have to, to do? 
Uh, I have not the y, I have not the, the, the variable that, uh, that can say me, uh, yes, you are doing well or no, you, you, you have to refine your model. And uh, yes, this is uh, uh, a very, very uh, strong uh, task that, uh, uh, that we will be discussed in a, in a proper session, in a proper uh, chapter of this uh, presentation. And uh, uh, yes, it is an art task uh, according to all uh, data scientists, as, uh, as said also in this, uh, in this quote from uh, this, uh, this paper. Uh, it requires uh, a strong effort uh, and maybe uh, most effort must be driven to this point. So uh, we have to do multiple attempts, mul multiple uh, uh, trials, and then uh, compare all the validation step to assess that what we have done is correct or not. And uh, let's do a uh, a uh, brief uh, anticipation of uh, what we will see in the uh, in the next uh, uh, chapter. Uh, what are the, the two ways uh, to uh, validate our algorithm? So uh, it is possible to take advantage of uh, some parameters of uh, goodness uh, that gives uh, information about the quality of the clusters. Uh, also without considering uh, external information. Uh, in the slide, uh, there is, uh, um, there is uh, the one, uh, the, the second one uh, that uh, is um, that uh, concern with external labels. So we can treat uh, unsupervised data set as, uh, uh, no, we can treat the supervised data set as, uh, uh, they um, they were they were uh, unsupervised, and so we can have the Y label, but we uh, we forgot this Y label, and we treat this uh, this data set as uh, unsupervised. And also in the validation phase, we take back our uh, our Y and do all the uh, comparisons. Uh, between algorithms to understand what is the best, which is the best, and all uh, all the other uh, parameters considered in the first point, so the internal cluster validity indices that are um, that are that consider connectivity and compactness and separation of uh, clusters to um uh, in in some sense uh, compare uh, the the the, uh, the the cluster algorithms that uh, that have been analyzed so uh there is a uh, it is a bit uh, funny way to to describe uh the supervised way to validate the unsupervised algorithm and this is not the one that we will uh, use in the practical section because uh, I have a, a completely uh, unsupervised uh, set. And there is the internal uh, um, cluster validity indices that uh, instead use an unsupervised technique to validate an unsupervised algorithm. So uh, with this uh, slide, I conclude this uh, uh, in, in, uh, this introduction to the this analysis. If you want to uh, to do some questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand. I will open uh, maybe two minutes the the webcam. Yes, and I will wait uh, also to drink some water. Yes. Well, Andrea, I don't understand what you mean with validation for unsupervised learning. Okay, yes. Um, um, so you, you refer to the to yes, this yes, last slide. Okay. Uh, with, um, okay. With uh, unsupervised learning, you produce um, a Y 
that uh, is not uh, uh, consistent, that, that cannot be compared with the, 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 the true Y. So maybe uh, validation is a, an improper term uh, compared to the one that is commonly used in the supervised approach. But uh, is the one that I, I want to, to use in this case also to uh, bring back the, uh, the meaning of uh, CVI, that is the, the most common uh, approach that you use to uh, validate the, the, the clustering uh, approach. So uh, CVI stands for uh, cluster validity indices, and uh, these indices will be uh, analyzed in deep in the next chapter. So uh, if you don't understand also with this uh, answer, uh, not, uh, not uh, it's not a problem because uh, there will be also a chapter only for this <laughs> for this part. But uh, uh, in few words, uh, you have to, uh, as you can see also by the picture, you have to be sure that the yellow point, uh, or not sure, but uh, uh, you want to validate as much as you can that the yellow points uh, are not uh, the green point. Uh, and that the red point are not the, um, the green point. It is impossible because you have not the term of uh, comparison. And so you have some indices that, are the, that have not a unit measure, so uh, a dimensional uh, indices uh, that can compare a different uh, cluster algorithm in the sense to minimize their value or maximize uh, according to the to the best performance of these uh, indices, uh, indices to obtain the one that perform better. So you can't uh, give uh, the the truth. You can only assess that this algorithm perform better than another algorithm. And how to say it by using these indices. So you will not uh, have... Uh... Okay, in a simple way is a way to uh, demonstrate uh, that uh, one algorithm, a supervised algorithm, perform better than another one. Exactly. exactly. According to the cluster related indices. Exactly, yes. Okay, perfect. Yes, yes. No more questions. Also, In a, oh yes. Uh, no, also to to add something to uh, to the question of uh, Hani. Uh, this sentence uh, uh, summarized the, the the difficult of this process. So uh, we have to do different attempt, different trials. Uh, we have different K and different algorithms. Uh, and only after this process, uh, we can assess uh, uh, through uh, the cluster validity, and this is uh, the best one, uh, the best algorithm. Yes, uh, Julian. Now, what I want to say is uh, you can uh, do whatever questions you want because we don't have uh, uh, limit of times uh, because uh, as uh, I don't know if I, I said it uh, before, but uh, this meetup will be split uh, in more meetups. So now I, we we are seeing the introduction to unsupervised learning and time series clustering, but uh, uh, we will have some other meetups. Uh, so we we have all the time all the time that we want. So yes, don't be afraid about that. Uh, so be free. Yes. Uh, Andrea Georgius here. Uh, if you go to the distances uh, part of the introduction, will you elaborate uh, more on that uh, the further further in your presentation? Yes, this this slide. Um, for, are for are you referring to this one? Sorry, Georgius. Georgios. 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 Yes. Georgios. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, uh, everything about this slide I find it interesting. So, will you elaborate? Uh, more in the follow? Yes, absolutely. Yes, there is a, 
there is a proper chapter about uh, distances. Yes, uh, distances and the similarities uh, according to the uh, different aspects and different uh, algorithms and different approaches. Yes. Good. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, this is uh, maybe uh, an introduction to the unsupervised approach. Yes. Uh, other, other questions? So what do you think about, um, so we have, we say that uh, we don't have, so in general, for example, um, if we are in a fraud detection domain, in this case, you don't have the possibility to say, okay, I have a, a Y label. So you don't have a label in the fraud, fraud detection sometimes. Okay. So you don't, you cannot, uh, uh, have uh, uh, a real validation approach, okay? Yes. So in this case, uh, in your opinion, uh, is, is it useful, useful to split in a training uh, and a test set, for example? It's one of the questions that uh, I was uh, thinking some, some days ago. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, surely your approach is the one that uh, is... Uh, is suggested also in, uh, in the textbook. So yes, it is, uh, it is clearly a, a good option, but uh, another option that I mentioned uh, before, uh, I don't remember the slide in which uh, I mentioned it, is uh, the uh, semi-supervised approach. So uh, if you have some uh, data that are labeled, uh, labeled and some data that are not uh, labeled, or you, are, you, you can't assess if this label is, uh, um, is true or not, maybe a, a semi-supervised approach can also be used. Uh, this is another topic uh, completely different, and so maybe uh, this one can be uh, deepened on in another uh, meetup. But yes, it is a, a very good question. Thank you. Okay. Maybe uh, we can, uh, if there are not other questions, we can uh, start uh, the, the second chapter, but we have not the time to, uh, to conclude it. So uh, in some sense, uh, I will, uh, uh, I will uh, make some clarification in the second, uh, in this second slide, we have the one of the questions that uh, some of you did me. And so uh, the next uh, step to, uh, to pass by the uh, common unsupervised techniques to the specific one about uh, time series classing. So uh, the three steps that I will follow are the following. Sorry for this joke. Uh, type of clustering. So the one that we discussed before, dissimilarity uh, measures for time series clustering. So uh, I mentioned before the distance, the, the classical distances that uh, we use in the classical approaches, uh, but we will focus on uh, the dissimilarity specific for this topic uh, and then uh, the prototyping approach uh, that we can use uh, um, in, uh, in the time series clustering and in specific in the uh, multivariate case. So these are the three steps uh, that we will uh, that will uh, follow. And uh, uh, I want also to do a clarification before to to go uh, with the next slide. Uh, we are talking about uh, um, time multivariate time series. What um, what are uh, what is a point? in um, what is uh, uh, the space is too difficult to define uh, at this part uh, of the of the presentation but let's focus uh, uh, at least uh, to the uh, to the concept of the point so we have not uh, um, feature one feature two feature three but we have a series uh, and so uh, multiple series, and so uh, multiple uh, little window 
in which there is a part of the entire multivariate time series. So one point is identified by a little window. Uh, let's take uh, the, the big uh, multivariate time series. And, and now let's take uh, one single uh, window of this uh, window of this uh, uh, bunch of uh, uh, series. This uh, this part is a point. So when uh, I will uh, make some comparison with the classical approaches, uh, if I uh, if I use in an appropriate way point, a point is a specific window. Let's uh, uh, this is a crucial point to uh, to not uh, uh, risk to be misunderstand understand. Sorry, Andrea. For multivariate yes. time series, do you mean on the x-axis the time and yes. on the y-axis different measure? So, for example, for a specific time, you have different uh, pressure or uh, uh, different uh, temperature. This is yes. this do you mean? So, yes. Uh, common uh, time on the x-axis, a different measure on x on axis. Exactly, exactly. Yes, maybe next time uh, when we will uh, uh, restart by the chapter two, I will take also a slide to clarify better at this point. There is a slide uh, in the next part, uh, but maybe it is the this is the right point to introduce this concept. So uh, as you said, uh, we have different measure. Uh, in the case study, these different measures uh, uh, are the different uh, uh, variables that are involved in a um, uh, in a machine? So in a like I said, in a car, uh, honey did the example of pressure, uh, fuel, uh, or uh, speed. These uh, all these uh, uh, are. Uh, part or are, um, are series of the multivariate series. The, the X is the time, and we have a, a very big uh, space of time. And we want to focus on little windows uh, to create uh, the single points. But uh, in the next presentation, I will start also by this point. Yes, uh, good, uh, good question. Uh, yes. Uh, but uh, let's introduce uh, at least uh, the two main uh, categories uh, of multivariate time series classing. There are two approaches. The first one is uh, the time uh, series uh, uh, shape based approach. And so time series are compared through their shapes. But uh, in what sense? The sense is that. Uh, uh, the time series are analyzed as a unique window. So uh, all points create a curve. This curve is compared with other curves. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, explain it in the univariate case. Uh, one line divided into different windows. Um, let's take the first window. And let's compare this window to all the other windows of this line. This is the shape-based approach. Uh, some examples, the, the most common uh, approach is the K shapes, but uh, it is uh, univariate, uh, an univariate approach. And uh, there is uh, the uh, DTW-based clustering approach that is uh, uh, an approach that is also valid for the multivariate time series. The second, uh, um, the second approach is uh, the feature-based one and uh, uh, the, um, the, the way we, we tackle this problem is the following. We take uh, the some features by the different windows of the different series of the multivariate time series. And let's do some example, like uh, the max, the minimum, the mean, the standard deviation of the different uh, series 
of this uh, specific windows, the window, and let's repeat this uh, for all the windows. So we will create uh, um, a data set divided into items that are the different window and features that are the different feature extract from the uh, window of the um, of each uh, series this create a, a classical data set that is analyzed in the classical way so k means k medoid clara all these classical approaches can be used in the uh, in this uh, transformed data set and uh, we will use uh, uh, mainly the first approach uh, the reason is because uh, many, many books uh, concerned with uh, uh, the classical approach. Uh, there are tons of uh, uh, lessons about, about this classical approach. I don't want to do, uh, um, I want to make, uh, to bring my, uh, let's say, innovation in the, the clustering multivariate time series. Uh, uh, and so I decided to, to focus uh, on the most innovative part, so uh, the shape-based one. But if you want also to talk about the, uh, the standard uh, approaches, uh, maybe another, another meetup can follow uh, about the unsupervised techniques in general, and uh, I will do also this. But since uh, this meetup is focused on multivariate time series, uh, I, I preferred to analyze the the, the first approach. Yes, and uh, uh, the the other thing, the the other uh, very important uh, thing is that the the second approach, so the feature based one, is uh, often used in the uh, biomedical uh, field. In fact, uh, uh, there are um, the signals that are analyzed very often are biological. Uh, uh, signal and they are they are analyzed in some specific frequencies that we will uh, talk in the next uh, in the next part of the presentation and so um, let's uh, let's do some example like the uh, the, the heart rate uh, the, the heart rate or uh, the the brain uh, waves uh, uh, that are transmitted uh, are analyzed uh, into uh, some specific frequencies. Uh, the um, in the um, in some sense they are they bring uh, a correspondent feature in the real life uh, uh, habits, and so can be used to cluster behaviors of people, uh, behaviors of uh, every uh, human or uh, also other uh, creature uh, that have uh, some uh, biological uh, signals. So this is another uh, another to interesting topic that can be uh, focused and uh, maybe in one uh, workshop uh, dedicated to it. Uh, but let's uh, continue to this, uh, uh, this approach, so the shape-based one. And let's continue with uh, the uh, distance or the similarity specific for uh, the time series uh, uh, clustering. Uh, the first one that uh, I will present is one of the most most famous one. Uh, this distance uh, is the dynamic time warping, uh, and uh, this distance uh, uh, can, uh, as said before, can be classified as uh, uh, less strong than a distance uh, be because, uh, as said, uh, the triangular uh, inequality is not satisfied, but is very, very interesting for the way we use uh, in uh, the comparison between uh, uh, time series. So, in this uh, uh, explanation, I will use uh, the uh, univariate approach because it is uh, simpler. Uh, it uh, does not uh, create confusion, but uh, can be also extend to the uh, multivariate uh, approach. So 
Uh, let's begin uh, the, the time, uh, the, the dynamic time, uh, time warping uh, concerned to begin with uh, two time series. In this case, uh, are univariate, but you can use also the, the multivariate one. So we have uh, x, that is uh, x1, xn, and y, y1, ym. So uh, the two time uh, series can be also not of the same length. This is uh, the, uh, the best uh, property of this, uh, this algorithm. So uh, you can compare with this distance uh, two time series uh, not of the same length. So go on. Uh, these two time series uh, are um, sampled with uh, uh, a regular clock. So this is another uh, important uh, feature that uh, our time series uh, must have. So uh, they cannot be asymmetric. They cannot be sampled uh, one second, two second, one second, two second. No, there is a, a regular clock. And then uh, let's dip on the mathematical detail. So uh, let's define F with the feature space. And so Xn and uh, Ym belongs to uh, this space F and uh, define a cost function. This cost function goes from F time F in uh, the positive part of F. This function, uh, as said before, define the so-called cost matrix and represent exactly the cost and I will explain in, this, in the next slide what is a cost between two points of one of the two, uh, between the two time series. The uh, CNM define exactly the cost of this point. The, um, the goal of this distance is to minimize the cost of this matrix that, uh, that is uh, exactly n by m. So uh, let's do a graphical example. We have, uh, uh, in this case, to simplify the situation, two time series, univariate also for the same region to, 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 to simplify the, the situation. And we have, uh, uh, the comparison between Euclidean distance and uh, the TW distance. What is the reason why this uh, work, warping path is the best way to evaluate the, the, the distance? Because between maybe the two uh, time series are not uh, aligned to the same clock. Uh, there is maybe some shift in one series uh, despite to the first one. This is the case. Let's focus on the uh, A figure. There is some point that minimize the distance with uh, points with the, uh, a time interval uh, more, uh, um, more to the right and other points that are aligned to points uh, on the left. Why in the C figure, all the points uh, have to evaluate distance between points that are maybe opposite in the phase. So this is a phase problem. This is a problem with uh, the way uh, the process under this uh, under this time series is going on. Uh, there are five minutes to the eight, so I want not to. Uh, bother you with this presentation, so I, maybe I will leave uh, uh, the floor to you. Maybe uh, if you have some uh, question also uh, for this uh, introductory part of this second chapter, feel free to, to question me and maybe I will stop here for today and uh, we will uh, take uh, uh, the, the next part of the lesson uh, next Monday. But uh, feel free to, to make some last question in these uh, five minutes. Uh, yes, I have a question because uh, yeah. I see in, your, uh, in the first 
the first picture that yes. uh, sometimes you have a point uh, associated uh, now in, uh, in other in other slide uh, with the with the different plots. Okay, in the okay. first uh, in the first picture, so, you yeah. see that sometimes you have uh, one one point. Uh, okay, in the in the pink and uh, pink uh, curve. Yes, that is associated to two points in the blue curve. Okay. Yes. So I, I don't see how to, how, where, with respect to the definition that you give uh, to the DTW uh, distance, uh, how do you, how can you do this, uh, this thing? Because sometimes, sometimes uh, I see that uh, you have only a one-to-one -one association and sometimes you have a one-to-two association. So how, how can this possible? Yes, this is a very good question. Um, the, the answer is uh, in the figure with the label B. Uh, as said, uh, you uh, evaluate uh, the matrix C and M. The matrix C and M put a number in the matrix uh, uh, labeled as B in the figure. And so in every point, uh, there is uh, a number. In every point of this matrix, there is a number. I never said that there is uh, uh, a violation if you put uh, five uh, five uh, um, green point in the same line. There is not uh, this kind of, of, of violation. And the, the uh, five uh, points, five, five squares, five uh, uh, green squares in the same line are associated to five points in the yellow curve in the pink curve, they are associated to one single point in the blue curve. So the, the way you, the, the, the reason why you did uh, the, this question is because I never show the, the following slide. And so the rules that uh, exactly rule this kind of algorithm. And uh, this is, uh, th there are mainly three rules Maybe I will anticipate it uh, uh, because uh, next uh, time uh, we will start also by this slide. This these uh, three rules are the following. The path um, must be, uh, uh, must satisfy the boundary condition. And so there is a, co a counter uh, example in the uh, B figure in which uh, uh, the path does not start uh, from the point 1, 1 and uh, hand to the point uh, NM. The second condition is the mono monotonous condition. And so the one in which you cannot uh, take the next point back in the x-axis uh, as shown in the C figure. So when you arrive to the uh, five, uh, a point in the x coordinate you bring back to the four and it is a violation the the fourth uh, the, the third condition is the step size condition so you have to do only one step at a time not as done in the d figure in which you pass from four uh, from uh, three four to uh, four seven these are the the free rules, but uh, I never said that there is a rule that you cannot do a uh, 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 free point in the same row or in the same line. So uh, this is uh, not part of the rule in the DTW uh, distance. Uh, not, not distance, uh, but dissimilarity that is different. So this is uh, uh, your observation is related to the fact that uh, it is not a distance, it is uh, a dissimilarity. So the triangle inequality is not satisfied. Pretty clear, but uh, and I hope that we will see more details uh, the next time uh, uh, what this kind of uh, distance, but uh, if uh, I got the point, uh, it's not a distance, but is uh, a dissimilarity. So yes. Exactly. Okay, so it's pretty clear. So, and I want to ask if uh, we have uh, other questions. I 
Georgios here, no, not really a question, but, uh, but a request. Uh, you said, Andreas, that uh, if we are interested in the feature-based uh, clustering, maybe a, another meetup uh, should follow. And uh, uh, I, I trust that we will hear a lot on, on uh, safe-based clustering in, in this uh, series, but uh, I, I would really appreciate uh, uh, a feature-based uh, part also to follow up. Yes. Thank yes. you, Georgios. Yes, I think uh, it's very interesting too, for me too. Okay. Maybe thank we thank can... you very much. Okay, George. We Maybe will try we... to organize it uh, in the future because now we have uh, yes. we are trying to to do a calendar about uh, different uh, meetup uh, meetups that we, that we will do and uh, one of them can be in particular uh, another approach to unsupervised learning if uh, Andrea want to do it. Yes, exactly. Yes. Thank you for uh, the observation, Georgius. So to conclude it, I think it's a very, very interesting meetup. This was, uh, uh, I think, an introduction, a very, very yes. interesting uh, introduction. So I, I really want to see the, the next steps. So the next uh, ideas that you want to, to, to introduce, uh, to, to introduce to us. So. Uh, as I said before, we will do some other meetups, okay? And uh, uh, I don't know how many we will do, but I think it, it depends on uh, how many time we need to explain all the topics because uh, the main point of uh, Machine Learning Mil Mil uh, Together Milan is to explain in more details some interesting topics. So this is the, the point, this is the reason wow. because uh, it's different from dif uh, some other uh, meetups or conferences. Uh, because we don't want to only give an idea about the topic, but to introduce in more details in such a way that you can use these uh, uh, tools that we introduce uh, in these meetups. And I think that uh, Andrea got the point because uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it has introduced the topic very well about unsupervised learning, and now it's uh, focusing on the time series classing. So I think it's a very, very good meetup, and I, and I hope that uh, the other one will be at the same level. Thank you very much, uh, Julien. See you on the, in the next uh, uh, appointment. <laughs> yes, so thank you. Thank you to all, all the, now I will. So uh, thank you to all the other people uh, that uh, was there with with us so i hope that we i will see and we will see you the next time so the next monday and uh, if you don't have other question uh, i only i can only say have a nice uh, evening and uh, see you the next monday sorry sorry andrea last question ah, okay. for your um, as a sources for uh, your uh, for this meetup and for uh, your chronology for unsupervised learning, you use mainly the introduction to statistical learning or, or, or uh, uh, other sources. Okay. Uh, other sources. Uh, in general, uh, I will quote all the references. Uh, I don't know if uh, in this specific case uh, I uh, did it. Uh, no, in this in this case, no. But yes, I will add also the uh, the quote of all the resources that I used. Uh, but uh, in uh, in uh, in other case, uh, in the in the next part of the presentation, every time that I use uh, a book or a paper is uh, explicit. So you will see. Okay. Okay. So let's conclude this meetup and uh, have a nice uh, evening, guys. I really hope that uh, uh, we will see you the next time. And uh, thank you, Andrea, to present this uh, very interesting topic. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Julian. And so bye bye, guys. I think it's uh, it's enough for today. Thank you. Bye. Don't, don't bye. eat too much. Eh? <laughs>